Hi, I'm Dr. Vincent Ho. I'm a gastroenterologist and a senior university lecturer. I'm also the Gut Doctor. Welcome to another Gut Doctor 3D animation. Today's topic is an important, common, and often poorly understood condition, gastritis. This is a story of gastritis. During digestion, the stomach produces highly acidic digestive juices that help to break down food. This is obviously a very important process, but in order for the stomach acid to not corrode the stomach itself, a layer of mucus coats the lining of the stomach. That layer of mucus is a key part of the defensive forces that protects the lining of the stomach from acid damage. There is ordinarily a balance between defensive and damaging forces that maintains an equilibrium within the stomach. When the cumulative effects of damaging forces overwhelm the defenses of the stomach, then we start to see stomach inflammation, also called gastritis. Ongoing acid exposure coming into contact with the exposed stomach lining can lead to further damage and create an ulcer. One example of such a damaging force is a bacterium called Helicobacter pylori. This bacterium is remarkably common throughout the world, and some estimates are that half the world's population is chronically infected with Helicobacter pylori. Helicobacter pylori moves around with three to seven whip-like tails called flagelli, located at one end. It can be transmitted through contaminated food and water, or through close personal contact, such as in saliva. It is a very common cause of gastritis and peptic ulcers worldwide. Helicobacter pylori is able to lodge in the mucus layer and can secrete bicarbonate and ammonia to help neutralize acid, thereby protecting itself from direct damage by stomach acid. Furthermore, some really virulent strains of Helicobacter pylori can contain a gene called CAG-A which can produce a type of toxin that when injected into the cells lining the stomach can lead to quite pronounced inflammatory damage. It can also alter their behavior and can even affect the stem cells found in the deeper layers of the stomach lining. This change at the stem cell level can make it more likely to lead to stomach cancer developing. Another damaging force to the stomach is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. A good example of such a drug is aspirin. After aspirin enters the stomach, it ends up being dissolved into smaller particles. The aspirin has a component salicylate, which can be directly damaging to cells. Aspirin can also lead to the cells lining the stomach, reducing their secretion of mucus and bicarbonate, resulting in a thinner defensive protective barrier and making the stomach more susceptible to acid damage and gastritis. Over time, acute gastritis can become chronic. And in addition to causing symptoms like abdominal pain, it can result in transformation of the cells lining the stomach. The transformation of those acid-secreting stomach cells into cells of the intestine that absorb nutrients is called intestinal metaplasia. Intestinal metaplasia is sometimes found with chronic gastritis, and it's important to recognize this condition because it can result in a slightly increased risk of developing stomach cancer. I hope you've enjoyed this video. You can check out more Gut Doctor 3D animations on this playlist over here. Please leave your comments and thoughts down below and subscribe to the Gut Doctor channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and see you next time.